Good afternoon. Good afternoon, church. So we're about to start our afternoon service, and we're glad we're still here inside our church. Amen. And this is a morning and afternoon service with our Sunday school. We truly uh, um, encouraged and blessed with the lessons that we heard from our speakers and teachers. We praise and thank God for that. We praise and thank God for what had um, transpired this morning in our worship service. Amen. And thanks be to God for our uh, sumptuous meal this noon. Amen. Uh, for the lechon that we experienced. And thank you for those who um, generously give this uh, wonderful food that we had. So, as a way of our start, uh, let's have, uh, please uh, go to your places, please. Take your seat and let's uh, pray that God will use this service to inspire us more. And thank the Lord for our uh, visiting missionary here. Welcome to them. Amen. And we praise and thank God for this, that we can see them and do their ministry later on and hear the message of God's word later on. Okay, so let's pray. Let's have a moment of silence, please. While the piano is uh, playing. wonderful music okay so let's stand all together and let's sing uh, praises to our lord our first hymn can be found hymn number one in our hymn book okay so let's sing uh, my faith has found a resting place on the first now my faith has found a resting place not in device or queen I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died, and that he died for me. On the second. Enough for me that Jesus saves, this ends my fear and death. A sinful soul, I came to him, he'll never cast me out. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died. And that he died for me On the third now My heart is leaning on the word The living word of God Salvation by my Savior's name Salvation through his blood I need no other argument I need no other that Jesus died and that he died for me amen what a wonderful song isn't it and praise be to God for our Bibles that we have in our hands and that taught us uh, about God and that leads us to our next song the Bible stands 868 and after this uh, song I would like to request Prayer from um, Brother Joe, please. Uh, after the song, can you lead us in a word of prayer? Okay, so let's sing on the first. Now, the Bible stand like a rock on down the mid a raging storms of time. Its pages burn with the truth, eternal and with the light sublime. The Bible stands, though the hills may tumble, it will firmly stand, and the earth 
it shall crumble, I will plant my feet on its firm foundation for the Bible stand. Can we hear from the ladies second? Amen, ladies. All together now. The Bible stands, though the hills may tumble, it will firmly stand. When the earth shall crumble, I will plant my feet on its firm foundation for the Bible stand. Last time, a man. The Bible stand. Every test we give it for its other ways divine. By grace alone, I expect to live it and to prove and to make it mine. All together, Carlos. The Bible stands, though the hills may tumble, it will firmly stand. When the earth shall crumble, I will plant my feet on its firm foundation for the Bible stands. Wonderful singing, brethren. So, Brother Joe, please. Good afternoon. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Holy Spirit, my Father, my Lord, I pray thee this day. Uh, I know that you know every heart, every every life, every thought that's in our minds just now. You, you know exactly where we are. There's nothing hidden from me. Lord, I want to ask that uh, this service is glorifying to our Father. And Lord, I also want to ask about people who may be hurting, perhaps even fearful in some level, even those who have had their greatest need met already, uh, Lord, that we would be strengthened in our faith even in this hour. And for the visitors, um, especially for the missionaries that are visiting, we pray that they would be able to uh, convey your message you know, and, and to tell us about what it is they're doing because each of us has a responsibility to, uh, to minister in some way. We, we learned so much this morning today already in the church meeting. Lord, we thank you for all the time we have, the time that you've given to us, the time that we have to meet together, and certainly to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise and thank God for that wonderful prayer. Amen. amen. Are you still there? Amen. amen. Are you still awake? Amen. Are you happy? Amen. Excited? Can you please greet your brethren? Hey, hi, hello, good more, uh, good afternoon to everyone, and good to see you here inside the church. Amen. And we know that in Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-three, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know what the word first there is? Fellowship with God, worshiping with God, or to God. And I is inspired word of God. We are studying the inspired word of God here, and let's pray for a revival of our hearts through God's word. And this morning, we had a wonderful message. Save to serve. Amen. We are saved to serve. And let's be thankful to God always. Amen. So let's put God first in our life. Okay, so let's sing another song. Uh, what is the next song? All that thrills my soul is who? Jesus. Okay, 824. 824. Please remain standing. Let's sing uh, three stanzas from this song. On the first now. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus? By His presence all divine. Through and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call Him mine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest 
house of ten thousand in my blessed lord i see on the second love of christ so freely given grace of god beyond degree mercy higher than the heaven deeper than the deepest sin all oh, that thrills my soul is jesus he be to God. Thank you for singing with us. You may now be seated and let's listen to our choir. Thank you.
Amen. Were you blessed by the message of that song? Sing, oh sing a new song to the Lord. Truly as believers, isn't it? When we got saved, the Lord had put a new song in our hearts. Even songs in the night. Before we were just used to uh, sing in karaoke. You know, uh, sing our heart away, sing our problems away. Maybe something on the side, you know. And... Uh, uh, of course, we love music because music is the universal language of man, the soul of man. But when we got saved, we have uh, this wonderful song that God had given to us, the song of the redeemed. Amen? And we thank God that when we get to heaven, when it's our time to sing before the presence of God, the host of angels will be silent, will be quiet, because there's a song that they can never sing. It's the song of the redeemed. You know? So we thank God for putting a new song, and uh, I know you have some favorites in our hymnals, uh, spiritual song and um, Christian songs, and uh, if I ask any one of you, what's your favorite song? Anyone would like to volunteer? There. Brother Joe, yeah. Oh, there you go. I am thine, O Lord. That's, that's a wonderful song. Um, today, uh, in our church, November is music month, isn't it, Sister Rochelle? So, um, uh, if you are uh, impressed by the Lord uh, to render a special music, you know, in one of our services, just approach our uh, music uh, committee and they're going to be more than happy to um, uh, let you sing for the glory of God. Maybe you have a favorite song, a song that has touched your heart throughout the week. Maybe it's a familiar song it's from the hymnal or a song that blessed your heart. So just let us know, and uh, you're more than welcome to render a special music here for the glory of God. Uh, anyone else among the ladies who has a favorite song? Oh, there you go. Until Then, yes. That's a wonderful song also. Speaking about uh, you know, the grace of God, perseverance to continue to run the race, isn't it? Because there's that beautiful city awaiting for us. Until then, let's be faithful to God. All right. One more. Anyone? Favorite song? If you know the title or the first line. Great is thy faithfulness from Sister Kathy. That's true. The faithfulness of God is truly great and wonderful despite of us, isn't it? So thanks be to God. For our choir, do pray for them. They are um, starting to rehearse. I think this is going to be the second week uh, for the uh, annual adult cantata. And praise be to God, we can do it again. Last year was all virtual, if you remember. And uh, Pastor Abel has to work extra hard, you know, to send all those music to us. And we, we have to work extra hard to record ourselves, you know, <laughs> to try to hit the right timing and, and notes. Uh, and they put it together, combine, and then we had a cantata, a little cantata, a few songs. But today it's going to be in person, so it's always a blessing. And it's also a time we can invite our friends and relatives to be part of our service. And, of course, the, the kids also will have one. So we praise and thank God for that. Um, this afternoon, looking forward for our second service, I was telling Brother Joshua, um, uh, by the grace of God, you need to excite uh, the people of God because they just had lechon for lunch, and uh, a big lunch. And, uh, but I know they're excited to hear you preach, and they're still alive and awake. And some of them had a good dose of coffee already and, and stuff. And some are watching online, so... We praise and thank God for your presence. So we'll be hearing more from him later on, but this time, like, to request uh, one of our young people here, Alexis, to come and read one of our missionary letter for our missions moment. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, church. This is your missions report from Reuben and Cora Floor from October 2021. Warm greetings in the name of the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying that you and your family and congregation are safe and in good health despite the challenges experienced from the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. I had the opportunity, opportunity to conduct a series of webinars on mental health with students, teachers, and other professionals. Here in the Philippines, many young, young and adult generation had been struggling mentally, suicide rate is increasing, their life is getting colder and gloomier these days, and it leads to depression. In our teleconsultation alone, almost every day we encounter lots of cases, Christian and non-Christians, 
They are feeling fearful of tomorrow because of their difficult situation. It's hard for them to cope, and they're already tired of fighting each day. We are grateful the we are grateful the Lord has given us the bu- the blueprint, the Bible, as a source of addressing such problem, not on our own perspective but his praise god we can give them hope pointing them into the lordship of jesus christ this does not mean removal of their problems but they have someone who can help them go through it the effects of the past typhoon makes people lose their hope they can't think of ways how they can start their life again cora's siblings were victims and up to now we are still helping them to understand why god allowed these things to happen They are not believers. We can only constantly show who God is by helping them build broken pieces that they have. That that they can have that they have to trust Jesus and believe what he has done for them. Most of them had been sick and up to now they are still recuperating. It's heartbreaking to see them in such situation, but our heart is all the more hurting seeing them live without Jesus. We praise God for giving Cora the opportunity to speak to a ladies' fellowship via Zoom platform. There There were 515 women attending and hear a great message on doing evangelism and discipleship. Their theme was bloom where you are planted, faithfully serving God. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 was was highlighted every child of God has to become a part of on this fulfillment. Thus, obedience should be exercised. Wherever God places them, they need to bloom and grow themselves spiritually by doing discipleship. As a result, many ladies are now actively involved in reaching souls in their community and workplace. Some some also started forming their small group gatherings for for discipleship. Hallelujah to to our King. Thanks be to God amidst hard trials, deep pains, magnitude of fears, Christ's grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12, 19. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the, lo- that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God places each of us in certain place at a certain time, in history and he places them now in sad situation as doctors it's critical to understand our god-given role in the protection and sanctity of life but we rejoice because we have an unlimited god who knows all things these this brings us to our knees humbly to confess pray and seek him thank you again for your continued prayers encouragement and support of our family as we continue to reach souls through social media platforms, through telecom- teleconsultation, helping their physical and mental issues. Praying for you all that our Lord continues to bless you and faithfully do his command and by obeying him. To him be all the glory and honor, Reuben and Cora, Jazz and J.D. Floor. And that's your message for, for this afternoon. Amen. Thank you, Sister Alexis, for reading one of our missionary letters. Uh, if you are familiar with them, they were uh, medical doctors, and they surrendered their life for uh, full-time service and using their God-given abilities to uh, spread the gospel and also helping the physical infirmities of our people. So they need our continued prayers and support, so we thank God we have a little part in their ministry. So thank you for our missions moment. Uh, this time, let me call our ushers to uh, receive our offering for this afternoon. And um, we're still having uh, our election for the 2022 officers, so we have a QR code there. So for the members 18 and up, please vote. Vote wisely. <laughs> and um, we will uh, continue to promote this until uh, next Sunday for those who are not able to be here. And of course, this coming Wednesday, our prayer meeting. And... Uh, one of our deacons will be our speaker. Then Saturday, I think we have a ladies' fellowship, you know. And Sister uh, Naomi, I think, is your speaker. So let's be praying for that, for our activities for the next week. So let's all stand as we always do. We'll sing our doxology as a way of giving thanks to God for all His blessings and this offering that we have right now. 
Let's sing it now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother Gilbert, please come and pray for the offering. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we praise and thank you, Lord, once again for this afternoon, for this time that you have given us, Lord, to once again gather to worship you in spirit and truth. We praise and thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that you've given us, all of the things that you have entrusted us, Lord, for all of the treasures. We acknowledge, Lord, that everything belongs to you. And this afternoon, Lord, we offer unto you this tithes and offering, Lord. And as we offer this, we ask for forgiveness. Please forgive us from all of our sins, iniquities, and righteousness. And may this tithes and offering be acceptable and useful unto your sight. And we continue to pray, Lord, that may continue to bless us, continue to provide for all of our needs, continue to bless our work, our jobs, our sources of income, Lord. Continue to also use us, Lord, to be a channel of blessing. We pray, Lord, that may continue to prove us, O Lord, that may continue to shower us your blessings. May you open your windows in heaven and shower us your blessings here, that there will be no room for us to receive it here. We commit everything unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you, Brother Gilbert, for that prayer. Also, we praise and thank God for our nursing home ministries yesterday, for the Word of God has been preached and seeds planted for the professions of faith and also for our brethren who are uh, doing soul winning and evangelism as God allows them to do with open doors. We have some brethren who had to travel so far, and the Lord knows your labor of love and your you know, love for lost souls and the way you are trying to reach them. So may the Lord bless you and keep it up for the glory of God. And we know that your reward will be in heaven and we are encouraged to do the same. And we thank God for um, our church, for its love for its missionaries. Uh, we're still praying uh, that the, by God's grace we'll be able to meet our goal for next year's uh, faith promise commitment. But so far uh, we're getting uh, wonderful results. So for those who have not committed yet, it's a friendly reminder uh, for your uh, faith promise giving for next year. We still have time uh, to fill up that form or uh, scan that QR code and do it online. And I know you'll be blessed by that. And uh, I still need to uh, pay our vows for this year. Amen? Amen. Because our missionaries are still waiting for our prayers and financial support. And the Lord will once again bless you for that. This time before we introduce our speaker and uh, his family, we have a, a special music from Sister Na Naomi call, calling. All right. Oh, he's ready to sing for the Lord. And uh, after this, um, to do our speaker. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Before I sing, I'd like to share a little portion of our uh, trip to uh, Vermont. Yeah, um, I was encouraged this morning to share this by the testimony of Pastor Abel when they went to the nursing home. Um, their purpose there was to be a comfort and to evangelize. And that was our purpose in going to Vermont as well. And when we reached there, we found out that the lady we were visiting was a Christian. And tell you what, we were the ones who were so blessed and so encouraged to do more for the Lord. She was a tough 71-year-old lady. She was just widowed. Uh, on the 30th of October, and I uh, can't help but remember uh, at the jo Sister Josie, and uh, yeah, we were so encouraged. She was, she was so, she was so blessed. She said she was so happy. She was, she, she said that we were God sent. She was so thankful that we went there, and she even said that please come back soon. 
<laughs> she enjoyed the fellowship. I, I noticed that she was taking notes when Brother Bobby was uh, uh, sharing the message. And that was really a blessing. And she also introduced us to a friend of hers, of which we want to include her in our prayers, that uh, uh, the salvation of the Lord uh, will also reach her home. So allow me to sing this song, Where Your Heart Is. Amen. That was a blessing. First time I heard that song. And uh, as we are reminded in the scripture, the Bible says, My son, give me thine heart. The Lord was uh, asking us to do that because if we give him our heart, then everything else will follow. And uh, thank you so, so much, Sister Naomi, for singing for the glory of God. I hope you're ready to hear God's word. And uh, there's no uh, accidents with the Lord. There's no coincidence. And just God purposely... Uh, Send Brother Joshua and family into our meads. Uh, I received a call, I think, the other day. Uh, they are with Pastor Dave Bolka for uh, his missions conference this week. And he uh, thought of us. And I think he's, they've been here uh, four years ago. Uh, I think Ezra was just a little baby. Now he's uh, almost five years old, I think. And uh, two siblings, you know? And they are missionaries to the Dominican Republic. So uh, I will probably will show first their video presentation, then... He'll come, and I think they'll also render special music. 
and then he'll preach the word of God. So let's enjoy their uh, missionary uh, report and uh, in this video. Thank you. They say God is everywhere, but he sleeps in Harabakoa. In this valley of just over 90,000 people that sits below the famous hammock of God, he is definitely not sleeping. We are the Lane family, church planning missionaries to the Dominican Republic, and we believe God has called us to Harabakoa. Over the last two years, we have witnessed the Holy Spirit working all over the island. Along with missionaries Wesley and Melina Lane, we relaunched the church now known as Iglesia Bautista Agua Viva in Harabakoa. In the year and a half that has followed, we have seen God working mightily for his namesake. Through the local church in Harabacoa, the youth camp that serves local churches and other missionaries in the Dominican Republic, as well as a 10-day evangelistic outreach into Haiti, we have seen God miraculously save 89 precious souls. While this is wonderful news, the reality is that there are 10.5 million people on the island, 95% of which actively engage in idol worship on a daily basis. The Bible is clear that all those who reject Christ are on their way to an eternal hell. The Dominican Republic is a country rich in history and a culture all its own. From the colonial district of the first settlement in the New World to many waterfalls, to its beautiful beaches and all the delicious food a person can eat, a person on vacation could find beauty in any place they look in the Dominican Republic. But when you look closer, the truth begins to take shape. Drugs, teen pregnancy, child molestation, and suicide are prevalent everywhere you look. Poverty, hunger, and a high unemployment rate add to the daily frustration of these precious people. They are looking for an answer. They are looking for hope. The good news is, there is hope. His name is Jesus Christ. In the Dominican Republic, they say God knows everything. God knew and put a plan in place. His plan is redemption through His Son. His plan is the local church. Through evangelism, obedience to the Lord and believers' baptism, and active ongoing discipleship, we are seeing lives changed. To those of you who have prayed and financially supported us over the last two to four years, we want to say a huge thank you. Words cannot express our gratitude for your hearts towards the Dominican people. These are the faces of your ministry. These are the faces of the lives your prayers and gifts have impacted for eternity. In the Dominican Republic, they say God is in control of everything, and we believe He is indeed. If the Lord wills, we endeavor to return as soon as possible to continue the work in Harabacoa, as well as pursue several ministry opportunities that are waiting. We are currently looking to buy 1,000 square meters of land for the Haitian congregation in Harabacoa as they have outgrown our current building. In the growing town of Boca Chica, we have land as well as a trained national who is ready to work. We are excited to get him in his own building that will no doubt be full quickly after it is finished. We will also continue to help grow Iglesia Bautista Agua Viva to the point that it can be independent. We are excited to return to the work God has for us. Would you please prayerfully consider supporting the Lord's ministry in the Dominican Republic? They are waiting to hear, and we are willing to go.
Well, it is exciting to be with y'all. It's been about four years uh, since we first were here, and T and I talk about our time here. I think we spent three days with you guys, and uh, the children had the little, uh, the happy hands. Yes, we have that video. We play that video in the Dominican Republic, and uh, especially when we start to miss home and things like that, we play that video. And so uh, we're just very thankful for you all. We're thankful for your uh, commitment to the Lord and to missions, especially See, coming in and seeing your board is just, it is very humbling. Uh, there's a lot of churches across our country that have closed their doors or they have not reopened. There are a lot of uh, churches that have stopped supporting missionaries. And so to come in here and to see that is just, thank the Lord for you all. I'm especially grateful to Pastor uh, for letting me stand here. Amen? Amen. And uh, it's not something I take for granted, Pastor. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, at this time, I'm going to invite my wife to come, and she uh, is going to minister in song. And y'all just uh, listen to these words uh, and allow the Holy Spirit uh, to, uh, to minister to you. While walking down a memory lane Not so long ago The enemy came by my side Making me feel low He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain When I had gone astray He wanted to discourage me As I walked along my way he said, you're undeserving, cause I know where you've been, and I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell, so what makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I surely deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags, and my goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you've said to me. It's under the blood, oh, praise is your name. I'm not what I used to be, my life's been changed. I'm not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Victory was given me when I was born again. He washed my stained and sinful past and put new life within. No longer do I bear the mark that sin had brought my way. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God, I now can say it's under the blood. Oh, praise is your name. I'm not what I used to be my life's been changed i'm not shackled by sin and shame it's already gone i'm happy reminding you it's under the blood que me puede dar perdón solo de jesus la sangre Corazón, solo de Jesús la sangre, su sangre me lavó, ya limpia estoy. No solo que era ayer, mi vida cambió, notado por el pecar, libre he sido yo. Feliz te recuerdo que mi Dios. 
cross me salvo. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Sometimes it's good to be reminded in your own language, isn't it? We're going to be in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. I am thankful for your commitment to the Lord. But I am also burdened because I promise you, church, Things are going to get harder. I promise you. You say, well, the pandemic is almost over. That may be true. But Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. I like my pastor always tells me when I talk to him, I talk to him about once a week, and he always tells me, he says, Josh, he says, the world is not falling apart. It is falling into place. So things are going to get harder. It's going to get harder. And so because it's going to get harder, I want to challenge you this morning. We, or this afternoon, we should have a commitment to holiness. Because they're watching. Remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, I, I want to make sure, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, I want to make sure I do right. That way when I preach, uh, I won't be a castaway. Amen? The world is watching. They're watching us. They know there's something different. You, you had better have a commitment to obedience. The Christian life is not a, it's not a magic potion. It's not a secret formula. It's very simple. It is trust and obey. That's it. The Bible is full of commandments, and you have the opportunity to obey or disobey every single day. And thirdly, you had better have a commitment to your king. And I don't mean the governor of the state. I don't mean the president of this country. I mean your king. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he saved you. He bought you with a price. And he's coming again for you. And so what are you doing with the time you have left? What are you doing with it? Daniel chapter 1 uh, in verse 1, the scriptures say this, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. I want you to understand that he was, at this time, he was the greatest king in all of the earth. There was not a greater man than Nebuchadnezzar. He ruled everything in the known world. But I want you to see verse 2, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Our God is more powerful than any man, Amen. no matter the position that that man holds. You see, the Lord was in control. With part of the vessels of the house of God. I like that. The Lord just let Nebuchadnezzar have a couple of his dishes. Right? That's what happened. The Lord allows these things for a purpose which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored, skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Aren't you glad that we don't have to do all that to stand before our king? I mean, Jesus did it all, amen? We have access to the throne room because of his blood, according to Hebrews chapter 10. We don't have to go through all that uh, to stand before our king. Now among these, verse 6, now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, 
and to Hananiah Shadrach, and to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, this afternoon for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you do not change. Thank you, Lord, that you do not lie. And because that is true, your word is true. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to be who you are, to do the things that we know you will do, to hear our prayer. Lord, thank you that uh, you have seen fit uh, to join our paths together in this life that we can serve you uh, together uh, here in America, in the Philippines, and in the Dominican Republic. And Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless greatly uh, as we are faithful stewards over what it is you've given us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. So here's what Daniel did. He made a commitment. That's what he did. That's what that word purpose means, simply, is that Daniel made a commitment. Now, we live in a, in a world, we live in a, in a society where people make commitments all the time, right? And they don't mean anything. That is not a commitment. That is just words. I want you to see what it says. It doesn't say that Daniel went and told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't go tell uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He didn't go tell them, hey, hey listen, this is what I'm going to do. No, what does the Bible say he did? He purposed in his heart. Do you know who sees your heart? Christ. He made a decision in his heart, and everything that followed was an outward result of what he had committed here. You say, Brother Lane, I'm not ready to make a commitment. You just made one. A commitment to non-commitment are you with me? Yes. A commitment to non-commitment is a commitment to do nothing. So you're either committed to serving the Lord. I'm just going to be very plain. Okay? You guys have heard me preach before. You know how I am. You're, you, you are going to be committed to Christ. Or you are going to be committed to nothing. Because there is nothing else. If you leave the presence of Christ, you are going nowhere. If you leave this book, you are going nowhere. Amen. If you leave this church that you are a member of, you're going nowhere. But Daniel purposed in his heart. What does he say? That he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat. I want you to see, Daniel had a commitment to holiness. Do you want to see your family changed? Your inner circle do you want to see your friends changed? Do you want to see your community changed? Your city changed? Be committed to holiness. That's how it happens. If you read the whole book of Daniel, and I challenge you to sit down in your quiet time, in your own personal time, and read the whole book from start to finish. Don't stop. Read the whole book and see what the Holy Spirit does in your heart. Because Daniel, right here, these... these uh, 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 six words, but Daniel purposed in his heart, the greatest king in all the land said, those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Mm -hmm. Chapter four. I believe because Daniel purposed in his heart, I, I believe this wholeheartedly. I believe one day we will see Nebuchadnezzar in heaven. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar if you study this out, Nebuchadnezzar, look, he, he had to be brought to his knees. The greatest king in all the land was out eating grass, okay? Because he said, look at everything I've done. And the Lord said, really, you did that? Really? So he spent seven years going crazy. And then the Lord brought him back to his senses, and he said, those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I think he very well understood who God was. <clears throat> but it started with Daniel making a commitment. Right. You want other people in your life to be holy? Commit to holiness. Mm -hmm. You want other people in your life to get saved? Be committed to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Because, see, here's what happens. When we open our mouth, if what comes out of our mouth does not match what they see, all you've done is make yourself a castaway 
We call it a hypocrite, don't we? That's what we've done. Say, Josh, what does all this have to do with missions? Listen, Daniel, okay, he went to a foreign land where he didn't know the language. That's what he did. Now, it was against his will. I do know some missionaries that have gone overseas against their will. (laughs) He went to a foreign land, couldn't speak the language, and what did he do? He lived out his faith before them. And because of that, kings believed. You say, Josh, I'm just one person. So was Daniel. But Daniel served the Lord. And I I just want to pause here and kind of take off on a little rabbit trail. When you teach your children about the men and women of the Bible, teach them about their God. Are you with me? Teach them about Christ. Listen, I know a ton of lost people. A ton. And they can tell me who David is. They can tell me who Daniel is. They can tell me who Moses is. They've heard the stories. You do your children a great injustice when you teach them about the men of the Bible and not the God of those men. Teach them about who God is. See, because Daniel purposed in his heart. Why? Because he understood that his king was greater than Nebuchadnezzar. He understood that the law of God was greater than the law of Babylon. He understood that the lifestyle he was supposed to live would overcome the lifestyle of the Babylonians. He understood that. Do you? But Daniel purposed in his heart. He had a commitment to holiness. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. See, isn't it amazing how when we do what we're supposed to do, God starts working? Here Daniel was in a strange land. And if you study out the history of Babylon, the culture of Babylon, what they did to their slaves. He had been drugged into a strange land. He had been mutilated. But still he purposed. And it says that God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. Why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. You know what verse 10 tells me? It tells me that Daniel was the only one that had purposed in his heart at this point. Because he said, of your sort. Very interesting. You have influence. You have influence. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel said, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenances of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter. And proved them 10 days. Listen, God's timeline is not your timeline. If you serve God, if you do what's right, God is going to act on your behalf. You say, Josh, you don't know where I'm at in life. Are you in a foreign land where you can't speak the language? Are you a prisoner? Maybe one day we all will be. Who knows? We don't know what this life holds. Say, Josh, you don't understand, man. I'm in like, I'm in all this temptation. Can you imagine being Daniel and these three guys? I was listening to Dr. Kenny Baldwin this last week, and he was preaching out of this portion of scripture, but he was talking about uh, the temptation of the world. And he brought out a very good point here that I just latched onto, and I've been I've been thinking about it all week. He said, Imagine what Daniel and the three Hebrew children went through every meal watching them eat, watching everybody else eat. Think about that. Now, think about what you go through every day. None of us in here are above temptation. You go out into the world, you had better be committed to holiness. You had better be committed to holiness. 
Verse 15, And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. That is a miracle. That is just a miracle. Why? Because Daniel was committed to holiness. But I want you to see, too, that in, in these 16 verses that Daniel was also committed to obedience. Because here's what Daniel could have said. Listen, when in Rome, you guys know the saying, when in Rome, do like the Romans? Listen, he could have said, I'm no longer in Israel. I'm no longer in Judah. I'm no longer in Jerusalem. I'm no longer there. I'm not with my family anymore. I've been taken into captivity. I can do whatever I want to do. And teenagers... Listen to me. When you leave your parents' house, you better be doing what's right. When that door slams behind you, you remember who you belong to. And it's not them. He was committed to obedience. Why? Because he knew God was watching. He knew. Do you realize that as a believer, you live and move and have your breath in him? You don't do anything without his say-so, without his allowance. You don't do anything that he is not aware of. You say, Josh, that terrifies me. It should. It should. Here's what we've done in America. We have watered down. We have diluted what the fear of God means because we don't like to be afraid. Go in your Bible and you look at how many times God calls himself in his word the terrible God. There is more to it than reverence. Reverence is simply a result of the fear. But knowing that you are in the presence of Almighty God had better invoke fear in you every day. But fear is not the same as guilt. Fear is not the same as shame, okay? Those are different things. But knowing, knowing what he is able to do to you and your soul, you had better be more afraid of him than them. It's important. Isaiah 8, 13 says, Sanctify the Lord God in your heart and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he will be for you a sanctuary and for them a stone of stumbling. Make sure your fear is directed in the proper place. Verse 17, verse, uh, Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them skill and knowledge in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none, like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better. Go back over verse 15 and at the end of 10 days I'm just saying I find it very interesting that he said prove us 10 days and the king found them 10 times better just chew on that for a while he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel was committed to his king. He was committed to holiness. He was committed to obedience. But I also want you to see that he was committed to his king. His king was not Nebuchadnezzar. His king was not Belshazzar. His king was not Darius the Mede. His king was not Cyrus. Four earthly kings came and went that we are aware of. And he remained. Why? Because he was committed to his king. And God acted on his behalf. I challenge you. We don't have the time, but I challenge you to get in and read Daniel. 
and see what all God did with him, raised him to second position beneath Nebuchadnezzar in all the land. And then under Belshazzar, he came in and he delivered the message of God. And then Darius the Mede came in and took Babylon and left Daniel in position. If you understand anything about conquering kings, that does not happen. That was because of God. And he was so committed to holiness, it says that all the princes and governors could not find anything to take him to law over, take him to court over, to have him punished for. So they had to make up a law to get him for his holiness. Wow. All throughout the book of Daniel, you see commitment, commitment, commitment. But here's how we think. We think, man, I don't know that I could be thrown in the lion's den. I don't know that I could do that. Why? Because we forget chapter 1 and verse 8. When Daniel was a young teenager, but Daniel purposed in his heart. And so when he was an old man, and he said, listen, I don't care what the law says. I've been doing this my whole life, and I am not going to change now. I'm committed to my king. You're not my king. He's my king. Amen. And he didn't go into the courtroom. Listen, he didn't go into the throne room and just start yelling and carrying on and getting all emotional and arguing with people, did he? No. It said that he went immediately after he heard the law and he went and talked to his king. As he did aforetime. As he had always done. He went and did it again. And when they threw him in the lion's den, because he had made a commitment here, and he had followed through with that commitment his whole life, when they threw him in the lion's den, you know what he did? He took a nap. That's what he did. He was in there all night. I think he slept. That's what I think. I think he was so at peace with who God was. I think he was so at peace with knowing that God would deliver him but also knowing that if God chose not to, that he was going to see God in that moment. He was so at peace with that, he went to sleep. And Darius came the next morning and he hollered. He screamed. He said, Daniel, did your God deliver you? Answer, yes. Because when you're committed to holiness, when you're committed to obedience, when you're committed to your king, he acts on your behalf. You say, Josh, I don't really know what this has to do with missions. Listen to you, church. And I, I, I want to say this. I am very thankful uh, for the way that you have taken care of me and my family this last year. Very thankful. In March 2020, we lost a third of our support. And then you guys stepped up to the plate. It was unbelievable. I want to thank you for that. But the work is not done. Right. Amen? Amen? It's not done. Right. There's other missionaries. There's other countries. There's other lost people. And to you, it may be a dollar in the plate. To them, it is eternity. To you, it may be an hour at work. To them, it is a copy of God's word. See, think in terms of eternity. Now, don't be, my dad always used to tell me, he said, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Okay? Now, some of y'all will get that later. But think with an eternal mindset. Why? Look at Revelation chapter 5. Look at Revelation chapter 5. Earlier when Pastor was up here uh, giving announcements, it just he referenced this chapter that the angels will be silent because they cannot sing the song that we sing. And I almost changed my sermon right there because I got so excited. I wanted to preach Revelation chapter 5, but I didn't. Verse 9, and they sung a new song, 
saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed who? Us. Do you understand that the Holy Spirit, through inspiration, through preservation, gave us a glimpse of our future right here? Us. That's us, the redeemed. Has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Listen to me, church. Do not be afraid of earthly rulers. Why? Because we will be rulers one day. We will rule and reign with him because of who he is, not because of who we are, because of what he did on the cross, because of his work. We will rule them. And so do not fear them in this life. Be committed to holiness. Be committed to obedience. Be committed to your king. Because he is worthy. Right? Let me just remind you. He was made flesh and dwelt among us. He was made a curse according to Galatians chapter 3. He was made a curse for them who are under the law. 2 Corinthians, he was made sin. Your sin. That thing that you do in secret, that thing that brings you pleasure for a season, the thing that brings you guilt, the thing that brings you shame, he became that. So that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. And then according to Hebrews chapter 5. Because he endured all that. He was made perfect and became the author of eternal salvation. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to serve. And so be committed. Because like I said, you are either committed to him. Or you are committed to nothing. There is no middle ground. And I promise you the grass is not greener over there. You are committed to him or you are committed to nothing. So you have a decision to make. Right? It's very simple. It's not multi-choice. Right? It's not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or all of the above. It's him or nothing. So what are you most comfortable with knowing that you will stand before him one day, knowing that you will see his scarred body that he endured for you? You will look him in his face. What will your answer be? What will you be comfortable saying to him? Yes, Lord, I was committed to you. Or, I know everything you did for me, but I'd rather be committed to nothing. Pastor. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes as we always do. We'll have a moment of reflection. Uh, Let's ask the Lord to continue to speak to us as our pianist play. I know that uh, God's word has uh, blessed us. Truly, it's a two-edged sword, had quickened our spirit, and um, had reminded us of something that we need to take care of. I won't ask you to uh, <clears throat> come here in the front, but I'd like to pray on the altar and before the throne room of God. Please do so. We thank God for this passage of scripture that Brother Joss had shared. And um, personally, this is my prayer, not just for myself, but of course for our family, especially our kids. More than now or ever, we need uh, to inspire them to have this kind of uh, commitment, this kind of uh, 
thinking and decision while they're still young. As Daniel of old had done, he purposed in his heart. He made a commitment. He made a decision to be committed to obedience and righteousness to his divine king who is the ruler of everything. And the question is, has been implied to us over and over again how's our commitment before God um, yes this Sunday is uh, we had committed ourselves some of our brethren to be part of our leadership and we praise and thank God that they made that decision they said to the Lord Lord I want to commit myself in this position to help in the ministry to serve you in the capacity you've given me Maybe uh, they watered it with a lot of prayers, uh, asking God for wisdom and strength and guidance. And I praise thank, and thank God for all the deacons of our church. Your, your names are not just there because it is our uh, routine every year. But I know deep within your heart, you want to serve God in that gift and in that capacity that he has given to you so i commend you for that i know you'll be the one that will tell god first if uh, you're not committed anymore if you are not anointed by god anymore to be in that position when there's no more joy in serving jesus or there's no more excitement and passion but i know that god is still giving you all those things because once again it's a wonderful privilege to serve the one true living God the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and thank you for making that commitment and to all our church officers who sign up their name to serve this year <clears throat> as you near the end of your term and once again probably you recommitted yourself made a decision to serve God Maybe in the same position or maybe a different one for next year. I, I thank God for you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I know God is not begging you. He should not beg us to serve Him. It should be out of the abundance of our heart to show our gratitude, our thankfulness for who He is and what He has done in our hearts. So, like... For us as a congregation, as a body of believers, I know our church is blessed with some growth biologically. We have a lot of young people. We have uh, also some young professionals right now. A lot of them are working. A lot of them are building their careers. We have uh, college students, teenagers, a great school. Let's pray that by God's grace we will teach them admonish them, inspire them to also commit themselves before God. That they will come to that realization. They'll make a firm decision. As Daniel of all that said, I will purpose in my heart to obey God. To commit myself in righteousness and obedience. To commit myself to my king, to my master. Because this world is looking at us. And the devil is going to be so busy trying to put us down. But if we make our decision to obey the Lord and follow Him, and by His grace, by His wisdom, by His strength, I believe we can, we can do it. Father in heaven, as your people pray, as they commit themselves before you, Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful passive scripture that truly can affect every area of our Christian life. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that if we don't commit unto Thee, we are committed to nothing. And we are reminded to set up our affection on things above. We are reminded to lay up our treasures in heaven. We are reminded, Lord, to continue not just looking for You, but laboring for You. We are reminded once again, Lord, that you are worthy to be honored, to be praised, to be served to, because 
of everything you've done for us is the least we can do, Lord, for saving us. Lord, thank you for the life of Brother Joshua and his wife and their three children. Lord, thank you for giving them the burden to uh, be your missionaries in Dominican Republic. Thank you, Lord, for their love for the lost souls there. Thank you, Lord, that even though they lost a third of their support, they kept on going. They keep on fighting the good fight of faith. They keep on committing unto the Lord uh, the burdens and goals and decisions they had made to serve you, Lord, in that mission field. We pray now, Lord, for your blessings to be upon them, for good health and safety and traveling mercy as they continue to do their furlough and uh, raise some additional support or even for that property. I know, Lord, that your hand is not too short to meet their needs. I pray that may you continue to open doors of opportunity for them that uh, while they're um, deputizing, visiting churches, that you'll use their testimony, their voice to challenge other Christians and pastors and churches to keep their doors open and have a heart for missions and really, Lord, divert uh, the resources of the church in winning the loss and, and the evangelism of this lost world. We pray now for your good health upon them and wherever they go, Lord, may your continuous uh, anointment of thy Holy Spirit be upon them. May you continue to make your face shine before them and use them mightily and tremendously, Lord, to challenge uh, God's people all across this country. And be with their children, Lord. I know they're so precious. And we pray for good health for them and strength and uh, continue protection from any harm or danger. And as we continue, Lord, to serve you in this place, you keep uh, the burden in our hearts, Lord, growing more and more. And uh, help us to continue to give our hearts unto thee. We pray now that you bless the remaining of our time together, for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed by the message? Amen. I was. Thank you. Praise the Lord for that. Let me call our ushers as we always do. Um, I know Brother Josh did not ask for this, but we'd like to be a little blessing to them, a help. So whatever you can give uh, to uh, our missionaries here would greatly be appreciated. And um, don't um, forget to uh, greet them and uh, maybe have a time of uh, fellowship with them as um, before they go and we praise and thank God for the way they minister to us this afternoon alright and may the Lord bless the, the gift and the giver be used for his glory and at this time let me call um, our song leader to please come Pastor Jet to lead us in our closing song and also prayer and benediction Amen. Truly, the Lord is good. God is good all the time, isn't it? Amen. Amen. May I request everyone to stand, if you can, and let's sing our last song, Higher Ground. Higher Ground. On the first now. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane that I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where this I bound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand By faith on heaven's stable land A higher plane that I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground At the last, 
I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Beautiful singing. That's a. Uh pray our gracious god heavenly father we would like to thank you for everything that you have done today thank you lord for leading our speakers thank you lord for uh, using their lives oh lord god and sharing your word and thank you this afternoon for using pastor uh, um, joshua lane oh lord god in the midst of us thank you lord for the ministry that you entrusted to them i pray oh lord for your blessing I pray, oh Lord, for your guidance to them, O oh Lord God, as they are going to reach more people for thee. I pray, Lord, that you use them mightily in that place in the Dominican Republic, Lord, and help them, O oh Lord, to uh, endure defecation. I pray that you bless them, O oh Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for uh, us here, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your um, mighty hand, O oh Lord God. And thank you for everything that you entrusted us as well. And Lord, I pray that you, we use it, O oh Lord, for thy glory. Help us, O oh Lord, to be faithful in everything, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. Help us, O oh Lord, to grow and be mature as Christian, O oh Lord, uh, seeking and trusting and doing your will in our life. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, read our verse in Hebrews chapter two, uh, 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And the people of God will say, Maranatha, until he comes again. God bless everyone. See you next time.